In this video, we'll be looking at how to organize your answer to question four. I've created this video in response to the many emails I've received over the last few months especially, asking exactly this, how do I structure my response to question four? And it's a really valid question because you may have all your non-fiction texts fully annotated, you may know them inside and out, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get full marks just based on that. You can't just throw absolutely everything you know onto the exam paper um, about that non-fiction text. You need to make sure that you're answering the question directly and that you're fulfilling the mark scheme and that's really focused on how you analyse language and structure. So this video will go through that. Firstly, if you have signed up for my online course, it is better to watch this through the online course site rather than YouTube. So I'm not sure which one you're watching at the moment, um, but if you are signed up, make sure you log in and actually work through um, on that site as you do have a workbook that helps you and it has extra activities in to give you um, some practice. Um, if you haven't signed up for the course and you would like further practice, then feel free to sign up. It's only $10. At the moment, it has 25 lessons in it. I will continually add to those every few weeks. Um, and the link is in the comments section on, on the YouTube channel. So um, just click on there and it's, it's really easy to sign up. So how to organize your answer. There are many different um, acronyms that you may have seen and your teacher may have used. And it is, um, it just depends on maybe your, teach, your teacher's teaching style or whatever you prefer. There's PEA, there's PEACE, there's PEEL, PETAL, WHAT, HOW, WHY, that seems to be the most recent one. And all of these will help you um, in different ways in guiding your organisation and to help you um, answer the question and fulfil a mark scheme. So all of these are valid. And if you have an acronym that really works for you, then stick with it. The aim really in using these acronyms is eventually you won't need them and that this will uh, come ne second nature to you. Um, but if this is a, an area that you struggle in, then these can be really valuable. So really in this lesson, we'll be looking at PEA and then towards the end, looking at how we can um, extend that to peace. Um, but like I said, there's no... Um, right way there's many different ways to do this if you have found a different way um, to do this then that's fine this is just one way that I find maybe with my teaching style um, has helped my students the most so the first thing you have to do before anything is you have to make sure that you're reading the question carefully and you understand what the examiner is looking for. So I've used this one as an example. How does Adichie use language and structure to present her ideas and perspectives? So one thing to note is question four always follows this structure. It will always ask how does whatever writer and obviously the exam will choose for you which nonfiction text you have to focus on. It will also say always say how does the writer use language and structure to do something. OK, and that something is your focus. So I've highlighted this. So here the focus of your answer has to be on Adichie's ideas and perspectives. So everything that you say has to link back to her ideas and perspectives. And of course, in every single question, it's going to ask you to focus on how they do that through language and structure. So really what's in pink, that's the focus of your analysis. So the focus of your whole answer is what's in blue, okay? Whereas the focus of your analysis has to be, well, how do they do that? How do they present their ideas and perspectives or whatever it is through using language and structure? Um, I see this time and time again, every time, if you look at the examiner reports, which um, some of them are available on the Edexcel um, website, um, if you look, every single examiner report specifically says for question four, you do not need an introduction or a conclusion and it won't hurt your grade um, directly, but it, you're wasting time. So in some respects, if the time that you spent writing an introduction and conclusion, you could have written another paragraph and potentially got more marks, um, but it certainly won't give you any extra marks. So don't waste your time, get straight into analysis. So if you are using PEA, how can you use this to um, make sure that you are fulfilling the mark scheme and answering the question fully? 
So the point, so in other words, the first sentence in your paragraph needs to directly answer the question. So in this case, you have to focus on what is one of Adichie's ideas or perspectives? And what you'll want to do within a paragraph is have a really clear focus. So don't tr don't have too many different ideas and perspectives in that first sentence. You want just one and keep that focus in your paragraph. You then, in your next sentence, need, need to provide evidence of said idea or perspective. Um, so whatever it is you said in your point, you need to provide evidence that she feels that way or she thinks that way. So in other words, where in the text does she reveal that idea or perspective? And often that will be by using, by lifting a quote, um, but sometimes you can reference it in a different way if, if you're looking at structure. And then your analysis, this is where the language and structure comes in. You need to be able to explain how language and or structure help express that idea or perspective. Over the course of your essay, you need to um, have mentioned language and structure but you don't have to necessarily mention language and structure in each paragraph so just keep that in mind as well. So let's look at this example really think about what you're supposed to do in each part of your paragraph and ask yourself if this candidate has done that. So if you look at Adichie describes a time when she visited Fide's village. Now remember in the point you need to answer the question and the question is focused on ideas and perspectives. So has this talked about Adichie's ideas or perspectives? Adichie describes a time when she visited Fide's village. Hopefully you came to the same conclusion as me. It doesn't clearly focus on an idea or perspective. So because you've, they've started this paragraph and it doesn't focus on the question, it's going to become really difficult for this paragraph to have any real relevance to the question. So the first sentence can be really, really important. Let's look at the evidence. She explains that when she found out that the beautifully patterned basket was made by Fide's brother, she was startled. So does the evidence link to the point, yes, it does, but the issue is the point doesn't answer the question. So even though the quote does link to the point they have used, has the candidate chosen a quote that gives much opportunity to, langu to analyze language or structure? So remember when choosing a quotation, one, it has to link to your point and hopefully your point clearly links to the question, otherwise you're in trouble. Um, but then you actually have to think about the next step. Has the quote that you've chosen given you an opportunity to analyse language or structure or both? And then let's look at the next se section. It says she didn't expect this because she didn't realise they had any skills. So that's why she is surprised. Is that an analysis? Have they spoken about the use of language or the, the use of structure? And the answer is no. This is really a rephrasing of the quote. And I've seen this quite a lot in student work, students' work. Um, so this isn't really an analysis of language or structure. They are really just summarizing and explaining the quotation. So unfortunately, if this candidate continued to write in this way, they wouldn't um, score very highly because they're not fulfilling the mark scheme, which one is asking them to focus on the question and two is asking them to analyze language and structure. So let's look at another example. So it says Adichie believes that single narratives can create limited and inaccurate views of others. She shares her personal experience of this when she recounts how her roommate assumed she did not know how to use a stove. The single sentence paragraph draws, draws emphasis on the limited view her roommate held of Adichie and exemplifies the patronising treatment she received based purely on the fact that she is African. So take some time now, look at each section. Does each section fulfill what you're supposed to do. And feel free to pause if you need a bit more time. So let's have a look, look at the point. Does it focus on ideas or perspectives? It does, it's a clear, uh, a clear perspective is introduced. And that is that single narratives are limiting and, limiting and inaccurate. So that is Adichie's idea and perspective. And so we're focused on that. So we've started this paragraph really well and we've set ourselves up really well to be able to talk about language and structure. So is, does the evidence link to this idea? Does the evidence exemplify this limited and inaccurate, inaccurate view? 
So this is clear evidence of her roommate's limited and inaccurate view of her. It also provides opportunity to explore the use of structure because she's chosen a single sentence paragraph. So there's an opportunity to talk about structure now. And that leads us to the analysis, okay? There's a clear analysis of how the single sentence structure mirrors, or sorry, that should say single sentence paragraph, which is structure, mirrors the limited view her roommate has. So this all links really well and um, links and feeds back nicely to the question. Um, so what you want to do as well, which I should um, mention now, for your answer, I would say you want at least four paragraphs like this. I think if you write three, I think it might be difficult to get full marks because you need to show kind of a thorough understanding of the text. Um, so I would say aim for at least four um, if not more, okay, um, paragraphs just like this. So if you are an online course student, what you need to do now is turn to your workbook. You have two example PEA paragraphs on page four and five. Review those examples and make changes to them. So I'll tell you now, both are not good PEA paragraphs and they do need to be changed, okay? So change them so that they fully answer the question and make sure that you're analyzing language and or structure. Once you've finished, so you pause the video, once you've finished, you're, what will follow if you're on the online course is my feedback on each paragraph as well as I share my own example. And just a reminder, if you haven't signed up for my course, it's only $10 and it's a great way to get some extra practice. If not, you're, you're obviously more than welcome to continue watching the video on YouTube for free. So you can leave it there. If you're really comfortable with that PEA, you can still do really well with using PEA. But one thing that you may want to do is cross-reference. Now, what I have seen, however, is sometimes students just cross-reference for the sake of it. And you don't want to do that. A PEA paragraph on its own can be, can be perfectly fine. Um, but you may want to um, strengthen your argument or further elaborate your point. And to do that, you may want to cross-reference. So what I mean by that is basically referencing another part of the text to um, elaborate on your idea, okay? So cross-referencing can help strengthen your point, but it can also make your work sound repetitive if not done effectively. So like I said, don't do it just for the sake of it and end up repeating yourself because you're wasting time. And I'm going to show you an example of that. So this is how it looks. So you've got your PEA, we've already talked about that. And then your cross-reference needs to provide a second piece of evidence of said idea or perspective. So whatever it is that you're focused on. If you remember the last example, we focused on inaccurate views, how a single narrative creates this inaccurate view of others. Um, so you would have to find another piece of evidence that um, supports that. And then again, I put explain here. It's basically analysis, okay? But explain means that it's easier to remember because it's peace. That's my um, that's that's my way of looking at it anyway. Um, but basically, you're doing the same thing. You're explaining how the language and or structure of the evidence that you've chosen further demonstrate this idea of perspective. But what you want to do here is you want to develop your idea rather than just repeating what you've already said. So let's have a look. So remember, this is how PEA falls. If you wanted to extend on the paragraph we've previously looked at, have a look at this. So what's added, this candidate has added this. Furthermore, Adichie describes her roommate's tone towards her as a kind of patronising, well-meaning pity. The adjective patronising highlights the condescending attitude towards Adichie that causes offence. So take some time now, feel free to pause the video. Ask yourself... Does this cross-reference add to her argument? Does it develop it or does it just repeat what she's pretty much already said? Okay, let's see what I think. I think this cross-reference, although it's relevant to the point being made and it does include analysis of language, it doesn't really develop the point and therefore it becomes repetitive. It repeatedly explains how the roommate is patronising and that's already been said. Okay, if you look at the analysis above. So I don't think this adds to the analysis. It's not necessarily going to hurt your grade, but you've just wasted time on a cross-reference that isn't really adding any marks to your work. 
So let's have a look at this example instead. So this candidate has added this. Furthermore, Adichie uses a parallel sentence structure to mirror the way her roommate had a single story of Africa, a single story of catastrophe. The repetition of single story emphasises the narrow view of the roommate and the parallel position of Africa and catastrophe reveals how Africa, in the eyes of others like her roommate, is considered a hopeless place that is synonymous with disaster. This, is, this simplistic view restricts one's ability to appreciate the diversity of the continent, resulting in a complete misrepresentation and misunderstanding of Africa. Take some time now, really think about this. Has this candidate used their cross-reference to develop their idea? And if so, how have they developed it? Or have they simply repeated what they've already said? Okay, the, this is what I think. We have developed this further, not only to explore the patronising view of the roommate, which was previously said, but how a single narrative has painted Africa as a hopeless place and left no room for anything else. And this all links back to limits and inaccuracy, so it still maintained that focus onto the question. So I would say this is a good example of um, cross-referencing. So if you're an online course student, um, you can now look at page, I think it's four and five, I forgot to include it on this slide. Um, so go back to the PEAs and see if you can add a cross-reference to the example paragraphs that you were um, working on. Try it first, pause the video, and then if you're on the site, this video will continue um, to listen to your own examples. And remember, you can always sign up. The comments, um, the link is in the comments section if you do want extra practice. Remember, there are many ways of organising your paragraph, many different acronyms, and I'm by no means saying this is the one, oh, one true way of doing it. There are lots of different styles um, in teaching this. This is just one way.